Well, thank you very much, Peter, and good morning, everybody. Can I start by acknowledging the traditional um, owners and custodians of the land in which we hold this event today and pay my respects to the elders past and present? And can I acknowledge Peter Black um, from the Faculty of Law here at QUT and all of the, um, not just official guests, but all of the participants here at today's event. Now, I apologise if I sound a little bit flat today because I've got a head cold of all weeks to come down with a head cold. Um, but um, uh, finally, two and a half years in State Parliament and it finally caught up with me. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but I do want to just say thank you for this opportunity to come along today. It is a, a sitting week this week, but I did not want to miss this opportunity to come along and talk about um, some of the exciting things that we are doing presently in this state. Um, with the time that I have, I haven't tried to touch on some of the uh, the issues in the federal area or more broadly, um, but I know we have a Q&A session and I'm sure you'll ask my opinion on things and I'm more than happy to give my opinion on what else is happening um, at a national level as well. Um, but I would like to um, begin by thanking Dr Hardy for inviting me to speak to you here today as part of the Brisbane uh, Pride program. This year's theme in our lifetime, past, present and future for LGBTIQ Queenslanders challenges us to consider our own experiences through the eyes of others. And as a Member of Parliament, I have the opportunity to wear a number of hats as Queensland's Attorney General uh, and as the Minister for uh, Training and Skills and as a Senior Member of Cabinet, I am in a uniquely privileged position to consider and influence the form and purpose of the law. As a local member, having been a federal member of parliament for six years and now a state member of parliament uh, for almost three years. I listen to my local constituents and have gained an understanding of their issues and concerns. People are often willing to provide their views, some more directly than most, but that is a good thing. It is important that leaders at all levels actually listen to their community and gain those views, but it's just as important that as leaders, we ensure that those views, those concerns are debated in a respectful way. My three roles as a community representative, a minister of the state and first law officer present unique challenges, but they also present opportunities. Our government is committed to taking every opportunity to improve Queenslanders' lives, whether it is through driving safer communities, supporting job creation, education and training, or redressing historical injustices. This past year has been a very exciting and busy time. The government has committed to an ambitious reform program, particularly in the social justice area, in which I am proud to play my small part. It is the job of governments to ensure that laws recognise that despite our differences, we are treated equally in fundamental respects and deserve recognition of this. Our aim is to embrace diversity and ensure equality. I am proud to be part of the Palaszczuk government that is committed to ensure that our laws and systems are fair for everyone and that diversity is embraced and respected. These reforms have taken place across portfolios and policy areas. I believe it is important to recognise and celebrate these changes today. It is important that our law reflects the values of equality and fairness that characterise our best hopes for society. If we accept that the law has a normative role, that the law matters beyond the words on the statute or transcript, then it is important that our law sends a message. That message must be one of fairness. Equality under the law, equal recourse to law, the equal protection under law. This includes relationships. One of the many significant reforms for LGBTIQ people in Queensland in 2016 has been the commencement of the Relationships, Civil Partnerships and Other Acts Amendment Act 2015, which was uh, assented to on the 22nd of March this year. This legislation delivers on the government's commitment to reinstate civil partnership ceremonies by enabling a couple, regardless of their gender, to hold a ceremony prior to registering their relationship as a civil partnership. The government believes that we should all be given the opportunity to officially declare our commitment to our significant other and to celebrate and acknowledge our relationship 
in front of our family and friends. The Amendment Act also made important terminology changes to reflect a couple's commitment to each other by renaming registered relationships as civil partnerships. And I can advise to date we've had 18 couples who have held a civil partnership ceremony and there are now 114 civil partnership notaries authorised to perform civil partnerships in Queensland. And I have to say, it certainly has been one of my highlights over the past 18 months to be standing in that chamber, not just when we introduced the bill, but importantly when we passed the bill. And we should reflect on the significance of that because I believe that it shows a shift in our community's views. That members who stood up and argued that these changes were unnecessary, that it's just a ceremony, that you can do it anyway and you don't need to change the laws to acknowledge it. Those who do not believe in same-sex marriage or civil partnership legislation still crossed the floor to support it. And that's the significant issue here. That they crossed the floor to acknowledge that despite their personal views and beliefs on this issue, that their community wanted them to support these laws. And that is a significant change. And I just want to reflect also, um, I've seen locally that shift. As a federal member, I was in an extremely difficult position when the same-sex marriage bill first came before the parliament under Labor, because I personally support same-sex marriage, but my electorate clearly did not at that time. Now, there are those who are in my position who chose to just abstain and not walk into that chamber and not vote. But I did vote, and I voted against my own personal view, and it's the hardest decision I ever had to make. But what I knew at the time is that we need to bring the community with us on this. And we hadn't quite hit that tipping point, but we have. And in such a short period of time in this country, in this state, we have finally hit that tipping point in Australia where people see this as an absolute right and it's about time we change these laws. And you know when I noticed it, I was standing in a mobile office about two years ago in my electorate. And I had, you know, I've always had people come up. I spent half an hour on Sunday having the debate with a gentleman who disagreed with me on this issue. But I had this gentleman come up to me at my mobile office and he was right in my face and he was having a go at me about the Federal um, Labor uh, Parliamentary Party and their um, view uh, in relation to a block vote or a conscience vote and opposition to a plebiscite. And he was very angry. He said it should just go to a plebiscite, um, that we shouldn't be blocking this, uh, and was you know, um, you know, quite aggressive in his views. And he was standing very close to being aggressive. And he said, even though we're in the minority who disagree with this, you shouldn't do it. And he couldn't understand why I stood there with a massive smile on my face. He said, what are you smiling about? I said, because you now think you're in the minority and that's what we needed. You finally recognise that the majority of people in our communities actually support this and know it's the right thing to do. And I think in part that has come about through the President of the United States openly supporting same-sex marriage. I believe that the vote in Ireland has certainly helped people realise that Australia's being left behind and it is about time. And I always said, I knew this would happen. I knew we would get this bill. We just needed to get the timing right. Well, the timing is right, but the timing isn't right for a plebiscite. It is time for the parliament to do their job. One of the other um, important initiatives that the Palaszczuk government is embarking on is addressing 
historical gay sex convictions. And I was very um, proud um, earlier this year to uh, advise that I was establishing a review by the Queensland Law Reform Commission to expunge historical um, homosexual convictions. Now, in many ways, the election of the Goss government back in December 1989 heralded the, heralded the start of what we now know as the modern Queensland. It ended three decades of very conservative regime. Perhaps one of the most obvious signs of the new world order was that consensual anal sex between adults was decriminalised in Queensland in 1991 in recognition that this type of private consensual activity is not a matter of concern for our criminal justice system. That change, as important as it was, left previous victims of an unfair regime with the wounds and stigma of past wrongs and that, that those stigma and uh, that unfairness continues to exist today. People are still missing out on job opportunities because this hangs over their head. So fast forward 25 years, and I'm very proud that we are finally addressing this historical wrong. The terms of reference that were issued to the Queensland Law Reform Commission was not, should we do this? It was very clear. It was, how should we do this? And um, just over two weeks ago, the Queensland Law Reform Commission released their report to me. And can I say, uh, in this room, uh, how grateful I am of the uh, extensive work that the Queensland Law Reform Commission has done in providing me with a report of over 200 pages that go to all of the elements that I need to be considering to go forward uh, and to give me the framework I need to make this happen. As um, we committed to, we will do this in this term of government. And um, I will be um, uh, progressing um, these initiatives in the near future and taking it through Cabinet. We will need to make legislative changes um, to do this, and that will take some time. And I know that people don't want to have to wait any longer, and I understand that. But I do ask for a little bit more patience while I develop that legislation to finally see these wrongs righted. There are also further opportunities to improve equality through reforms, and we have committed to removing the gay, uh, gay panic defence, which I am currently in the process of drafting right now to introduce into legislation in this term of parliament. One that I'm very pleased to say that the LNP have indicated that there is bipartisan support on this, as I, um, I hope and I believe there is on the uh, expunging of historical homosexual convictions. Tomorrow, the Health Minister will stand in the State Parliament and debate and pass legislation in relation to sexual health. And that bill will include addressing the age of consent. Another long overdue reform. <laughs> to consider that we still have legislation in this state that says that sexual intercourse of one type is okay at 16 years old, but of another type it's not until you're 18. It's just ridiculous, to say the least. But the more serious element of that is that young people between the ages of 16 and 18 who are engaging in sexual activity, that includes anal intercourse, are not going off and seeking the advice they need from their GPs and sexual health advice because this is currently a criminal offence. It is a criminal offence and it is about time we rectified this wrong. And I'm so pleased that this week in this parliament we will see, and I'm confident that we will have the support to see this change go through our state parliament. Another reform that you will see 
um, coming in, being introduced into Parliament this week, is changes in relation to the Adoption Act. This is legislation to propose changes to the Adoption Act to broaden the eligibility criteria for persons to adopt a child to include same-sex couples, persons undergoing fertility treatment and single persons. The legislation is, um, as I say, due to be introduced this week by the Honourable Minister Fentiman, Minister for Communities, Women and Youth, Minister for Child Safety and Minister for the Prevention of Domestic and Family Violence. This will place Queensland in line with Australian do other Australian jurisdictions such as New South Wales and Victoria, which already allow same-sex couples to adopt a child. So what that means in just 18 months in minority government is that we are addressing the expunging of historical homosexual convictions. We are finally addressing age of consent. We are repealing the gay panic defence. We are making same-sex adoptions legal. Not bad for a minority government, I reckon. <laughs> Next year, we will be reviewing the Births, Deaths and Marriages Act. And in doing so, will allow us to look at a range of other important initiatives in relation to the LGBTIQ community. Um, there are complexities around this. And so we do need to make sure that we get this right and we do undertake a comprehensive review of this Act. So there will be opportunities as part of that review for individuals and stakeholders to have input as to what should go on birth certificates into the future. What should go um, in relation to, I hope, marriage certificates into the future. Let's hope by mid next year, when I'm reviewing the Births, Deaths and Marriages Act, that we already have same-sex marriage in this country. These reforms have not been easy or simple to progress. And in progressing these changes, our government has embraced consultation and the methodical development of evidence-based policy to importantly achieve long-term reform. Put another way, I'm determined that with these important, indeed, historic reforms, I want to bring the community with us. I don't want to see these sorts of issues used as a political football, so that every time we take one step forward, a future government takes us two steps back. Let's remember that some of these reforms have been 25 years in the making. The last thing I want to see is them being taken away into the future. And the last one I wanted to address is I currently have a parliamentary committee report on whether Queensland should introduce a human rights bill. I committed to the community to undertake this review and to listen to the views expressed. Unfortunately, there wasn't bipartisan support in that parliamentary committee report. But don't underestimate the importance we put in this issue and I'm currently working my way through that parliamentary committee report to take a proposal to our cabinet. But this is just another important step in ensuring that we have fairness and equality in our great state in Queensland. So why are we doing all this in minority government, in a first term government? and undertaking so many significant historic reforms, especially in relation to social justice, because it's what good governments should do. It is about the type of society that we want to be. It's about the legacy we want to leave behind. I look forward to today's discussion and thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you today. Your views and experiences matter to me and they matter to our government, to many in this room Thank you for your unwavering commitment to reform and strong advocacy in making Queensland and Australia a more inclusive community. Thank you.